everybody, whether you're in the morning, afternoon, or evening. It's nice to see you all, and thank you for taking time out of your day to uh, learn more about our Opimian producers. Today we're talking about uh, seller 281, which I hope you're enjoying the new format that we've designed this year in 2020-21 uh, seller season. We've combined uh, Vino Etc. into it so that you've got all of the articles and information right there next to the wines that are on offer. So yesterday we did South Africa, as I mentioned, and today we are doing um, Tuscany. And we have two of our very valued partners with us today. Thank you for joining us, Nicola and Nicolo. Got to get that. Pleasure. And, uh, and <laughs> Carolina. Um, they, they have taken times out of, out of their evenings and, uh, and they are going to give you a lowdown on the wines that are on offer in 281. So without further ado, I will uh, go to Carolina first and uh, welcome. And uh, that is a beautiful background you have there, and I wish I were there. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Michael. Well, good morning, I guess, to everyone, to all the opinion members. Um, just a brief background on myself. So my family has been working with Opinion for many, many years and always um, trying to find unique estates and essentially helping them to find their way to the Canadian market. And you probably know me better for my wines. Um, we also, the A. von Keller wines, which have been a substantial part of the Opinion wines for many years now, those are made by my family. So as a producer, you obviously travel around and you meet a lot of people and you taste a lot of wines. And hence, um, I hope you like what we've, we've um, put together for the Tuscany offering. And obviously everything was then selected by Jane, but I hope you, you enjoy also some of the new estates that we added this year. And that's exactly what I wanted to focus on, probably more on the, on the newer estates that were added this, this time. Um, well, let's get started because I have quite a lot of wines to talk about. <laughs> So um, yeah, feel free to ask questions throughout. Um, the first estate and winery that I wanted to talk, sorry, to talk about is the uh, Morellino di Scanzano. And Morellino di Scanzano is a um, actually it is, is a cooperative, and it has been part of uh, has been working with Opinion for several years already now. So I'm I'm sure some of you know the wines already because they have been part of um, of the offerings for for a few years now. It's a cooperative in Scans in the Scansano area, which is the southern part of uh, Tuscany, right in the Mar so called Maremma area. So towards the seaside, right? Right between the mountains and the seaside. That's where um, the Scansano, the Morlini Scansano uh, winery is, is, is at. It was founded in uh, 1972 um, by a few, with, with a, when a few, few growers got together and, and to really unify their forces and start vinifying together. And nowadays they obviously grew and now they have, there are about 170 growers that are combined, unified together and working on 700 hectares of land. Um, the good thing with, with cooperatives, obviously there are a lot of cooperatives out there. Um, in that case, so the, the good thing is that they have one viticulturalist and one winemaker that overlooks the whole process, obviously hence guaranteeing really the whole process of the, of the, of the growing and the vinification in the cellar then. And they work both conventional but also organic on some of their sites. And um, yeah, we have quite a few wines, as you can see, um, um, that were chosen from, from the estate Morellini, from the winery Morellini di Scansano. So the first wine that you see, um, the 2234, the Rogiano, is a wine that I really like a lot because it's a very easy drinking, fresh, youthful um, wine that really pairs well with a lot of, lot of things. Um, Morellini di Scansano, obviously, um, I didn't say that, but it's a DOCG since 2006, and it's, it's um, their denomination says that it has to be at least 85% of Sangiovese, and hence in this case, it is 95% of Sangiovese. And um, exactly, so this is an easy drinking um, Sangiovese, essentially. Whereas when we then look at the other two, next two wines that you see here, always from the same winery, they are getting a little bit more complex, right? The first one was for everyday drinking. That, that's, that's kind of my opinion. The next one become more serious, more medium to fuller bodied, right? So we have the Vigna Beneficio, which is number 2235. And um, this is 100% Sangiovese and it's, it's from a 100% single vineyard uh, um, site. 
planted on lower levels and uh, it sees oak whereas the first one was only stainless steel this one sees oak for about six months and um, and hence you definitely get more of the richness of the structure on the palette with the Vigna Beneficio for sure. And, and Carolina, very... I'm going to interrupt you for a quick second here, and I promise I won't take this out of your time. Sure. Is that you, you mentioned DOCG, and I think it's worth saying to the group about um, IGT, uh, DOC, yeah. and DOCG, what the different classifications, kind of that the one pyramid. above the other. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we start with, in, in Italy, we, that's, uh, we have a fairly simple denomination system, meaning that the, at the base of the pyramid, you have a um, Vino d'Italia, so Vino Rosso d'Italia, Vino Bianco d'Italia, so that's the basically a, a basic table wine. T table wine. Table mm -hmm. wine, right? Then we start with the IGT, so next step up is the IGT wines. And this, 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 is, is, this denomination is, system is true for all of Italy, right? So table wine, IGT, and then you have DOC, and only in some certain areas, you also have, you also find DOCG. So that's the, the top of the pyramid, right? And it's generally um, strictly regulated and uh, lower yield. So the, the strictest, um, the, the, the highest denomination, obviously with the highest requirements for quality, DOCG, but not in every region you find DOCG, right? So only specific areas do have a DOCG status. And in this case, the, um, Morellino di Scansano, they got it in 2006 or seven, six, yes. And, um, and hence, this is the highest appellation. Prior to that, it was only DOC. Right? And remarkable to see DOCGs at these price points, I find. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Thank you for yeah. giving us access to those wines. Okay, over right. to you again. And again, I haven't Thank taken you. any of your time. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> and... Very interesting is the Vin del Fattore, which is number 2236. Um, because in this case, again, it's, um, it's part of their highest tier that they have, right? Um, and it's 90% Sangiovese, and then we have a little bit of Chile Giolo, 10%. Um, but the interesting thing here in this case is that it is, um, uh, grapes are being dried, right? So you might think of the Morona process up in, in the Veneta area. So in this case here, we have uh, uh, grapes that are being dried, right, on, 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 on small, um, yeah, in small baskets in the aerated room until they, they shrink to about, they lose about 15% of their weight, the grapes. And only then the vinification is, is being started. And what, what does this vinification process lead to? Obviously a wine with much, much more concentration and a certain kind of, um, uh, kind of I shouldn't say sweetness, but a certain kind of richness to the wine, right? And hence, this is a very soft, a very smooth, but a, a kind of medium to full-bodied wine, definitely. And a wine that you can definitely also age for, for, for some time. So Vin del Fattore, to me, very interesting. And I find it a very... Um, pleasant wine to drink. We then, um, still also with the same uh, winery, we have a white wine, which is the um, Vermentino, right? Vermentino is this um, beautiful, um, very approachable white wine, white grape, I should say. And um, it's, it's, yeah, major grape variety in that area, obviously. And in this case, it's only stainless steel, obviously to kind of focus on the primary aromas of the variety. And um, it sits on its fine leaves for about three months. And it's then really ready to, to it kind of, it's being released then early the next year. So it's an easy drinking, um, young, youthful white wine, what you find in the Valmentino. And it's a wine that really pairs with a lot of things and um, just by itself or with some kind of white meats. It's, it's really a pleasant white wine for, for every day, I would say. Exactly. And it's, it's, I, Vermentino is general in this case, and it's not a wine that you want to age. It's made to be drunk young. Yeah, and hence you also see the, the latest um, vintage on that one. All right. And then we move to uh, the next winery, which is a winery that you have also seen already uh, in the, some of the past offerings. And it's the Scantianum. And um, in this case, Sorry, did I jump one wine? No, sorry. No, I think you're right. I am still right. right? So we're still on the same winery though. Sorry, I skipped one wine. And um, the Sangiovese is their, um, it's their mid-tier Sangiovese wine, 
85% Sangiovese and then Alicante, Chile, Giolo, and Merlot. And it's um, stainless steel only and no oak in this case. Right. And now, though, we go to the Seraphicum. That's what I wanted to say. And it's, that's also an estate that you have seen for several years, I believe. So they have, we have been working with them for a while, right, Michael? I, I was hoping to hold up a bottle, but they're all gone. I know, <laughs> I know. So, Going to have to restock, that's for sure. Restock, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I know, it's, it's, it's a great estate. And it's, I believe, also one of Jane's favorites. Um, it has been for the past years, I know. And um, yeah, so Africum, just a little bit about the estate. It's in this case, uh, it's a private estate. It's a private estate founded only in 1967 in Greve and Chianti, so we're in the heart of the Chianti area. And it was founded by two friends, really with a passion for Sangiovese. <laughs> That's how they, how they call themselves. And it's still owned by those two families, the Saket and the Zaccheo family. And the winemaker nowadays is actually the daughter of uh, Sake, so Caterina. She's the daughter and she makes the wines now. And um, she does like to use some oak. So you'll find that on, on both of the wines um, that, we're, that, we, that you have in the offering, um, that, they're always, that she always uses this kind of, this, this, a certain kind of oak treatment to kind of get the softness and the richness in the wines. And you'll see that in, in, in really in both of the wines, definitely see her signature. And um, we have two wines in this case. Uh, for Seraphicum, we have the Toscana Rosso EGT, and we have then the, um, the, the, class, the Chianti Classico, the OCG. And um, both 2019. Um, so the um, Seraphicum, the IGT one uses, she uses in this case 70% Sangiovese and then some uh, Cabernet and some other varieties that make up the 30%. And the varieties, um, she likes to, to vinify them separately and only then blend them together. And they are um, matured then in, in, in oak and yeah, and available then early next year. And the Chianti Classico DOCG, DOCG is 80% um, Sangiovese and then only 20% a blend of some other red grape varietals of the area, right? And it's, it's aged for six months or longer in oak casks. And um, certainly it's, it's an estate that um, we know very well, we like very much. And, and I think the collaboration with Opimian has been great for over all these years. And um, they really appreciate kind of having access to the Canadian market through Opimian. And um, so it's, it's, it's a great collaboration that we've been having, yeah. And then I move on to the next wine and now we, next winery, and now we're really going into the, into, we're really talking about the historic um, uh, estate. It was founded in, uh, in the early 1933 by the Franceschini family, which is, was a family from Florence and was then later on sold to the Cinzano family in 73. And we're now in the heart of the Montalcino area and it's a historic Brunello producer. Um, still privately owned now by the Cinzano family. They produce uh, about 700,000 bottles a year and are nowadays um, the third largest producer for Brunello. And it's, it's really, um, really a, a top-notch producer for Brunello, I, I would say. And we have, we're very, very, very lucky that they um, um, you know, were able to <laughs> offer the, uh, this small vertical on the Brunello which wasn't easy and, and Opimian asked me and, and said, hey, can we, can we do, do you think a mixed case of, of vintages, of older vintages? And um, at first I said, oh no, that's not possible because I know like they always sell out. And then I asked and approached them and then uh, this is what we were able to kind of put together for you exclusively. So you'll see the um, uh, Il Veltro Brunello di Montalcino 2013, 14 and 15. Right, and this is really, really unique. There are not too many cases available, um, so I don't know at what point we are now, Michael. But I don't know how many, how much is it, still it, available. It's getting extremely close. So if you, okay. if anybody on the call wants them, I would recommend. And it's not a sales pitch that that they get it now because we will sell out. There's no question about it. Yeah, and it's the, it's very a very interesting vertical because you see three vintages that are that were quite different. 2013 yeah, um, kind of was more of a, a, a I would say a, a, a classic, a traditional um, vintage for, for that area. It's a little bit riper in style. 
you'll see the 14 completely different because it was more of a wetter season and hence definitely cooler, higher in acidity, um, definitely a little bit thinner. And then you have 15, which some say was one of the best Brunello vintages for the last, for many years, I should say, probably for the last 10, 15 years. So, um, so 15 is an amazing vintage. It was definitely more of a warmer vintage, but apparently one of the best vintages that, that Brunello has seen for many, many years. So um, yeah, and then in the classic offering, so not as, a, as a, a vertical, we also have the 2016 vintage. It's certainly still young for a Brunello. As you know, Brunello is a wine that you do want to age for quite some time. And hence, um, it's still young, but definitely the direction it's going is very interesting. And 2016 has been a, a very, um, classic and I would say very um, nice vintage with nice um, ex day and night temperature fluctuations and hence being able to preserve the primary aromas yet kind of develop the structure and, the, and, the, and, and essentially obviously harvest at optimal maturity. So and I will yeah. say thank you so very much for making that vertical case available to us in a three pack. It makes mm -hmm. it so much more accessible and and those of you on the call who, who have not had Brunello, you need to buy this vertical. It's so much fun to be able to set up. And then when you're learning a, a, a style of wine like this, to be able to try three vintages in a row and get a sense of how they are the same, but how they're dissimilar as well. is just a fascinating way of doing that. So any of you in Kitchener can probably come over to my house when these arrive in Canada and hopefully we'll all have had the vaccine by then. And we can uh, we can go through this case together because it's it's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, and then let's not forget that this is really a classic producer. So it's a very traditional way of making uh, the Brunello. So it's really um, a great example to me for Brunello. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead. I keep interrupting, but just just no, no, go, no. That I like the dialogue. I like the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the next wine, though, is a wine is is an estate that has is new to opinion, and it's an estate that we only um, yeah we we introduced only with this offer, and I'm I was happy to see that the Jane and enjoyed the wines uh, quite a bit, and hence um, chose three of them, which I was excited to see. So Franjosa is a family owned estate. It's a very small estate. It's a very small of all the estates that we offer. This is the smallest. So we're talking about 50,000 bottles that they produce a year. They only work on 21 hectares of land. And it's, um, it was founded only in 1996 by Luigi Franjosa, who's still the owner. And um, he's the th a third generation vineyard grower, right? So prior to that, they have been delivering grapes to um, other wineries, but only since 96, kind of he um, started vinifying himself, right? It's, it's, as I said, very small, all sustainably um, planted. And we're now in the heart of the Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. So Vino Nobile di Montepulciano is in, in, we're talking only Tuscany today. So it's, if you have Tuscany in front of you, it's towards the Southern and to the right parts, so kind of going towards Umbria area, just for you to understand. So this is the Vino Nobile di Montepulciano area. And, um, and again, it's Sangiovese, right? And um, we, have, we have, Jane has selected three wines. So we're talking the first wine, hang on, I just get your code. So I'm talking about the right wines. So the first wine that we have is 2244, which is Rosso di Montepulciano. And this is um, made of, uh, of Sangiovese, Canaiolo, Neo and Merlot, but I, I don't know exactly the percentage of Sangiovese, but it's probably, it's, it's, it's probably 90%, over, over 85% at least. And it's, um, it's stainless steel only, right? So in this case, it's, there is no oak, um, no uh, cask at all. And hence it's all about the primary fruit aromas and really all about expressing those beautiful, delicate primary aromas that you have in this um, Sangiovese that comes from this area, as I said, kind of Southern to the right part within um, Tuscany. And um, this is a wine that is really, um, a wine, uh, everyday red wine, and it's fresh, youthful, and, and refreshing, I would say. <laughs> and um, the next wine from Franjosa, the number uh, 2245, is um, the Vino Nome di Montepulciano, right? So this is what the area is really 
famous for is the Vino Nomale di Montepulciano. And in this case, we have it's um, Sangiovese, and it's um, it's a wine that is hand harvested the last days of September, and then it's fermented classically and at a controlled temperature and, uh, and and they vinify generally for about 20 to 25 days so qu quite long and it's then um, aged in Slavonian oaks for about um, um, one and a half two years right before, prior to being released so two years for the Vino Nobile Montripiciano that's that, that's the requirement of the denomination at least right so we're now um, you're you're having 2016 right as a vintage I believe so and uh, this is the current vintage that they're selling right now and um, this is really a beautiful example of Vino Nobile Montepulciano very elegantly made uh, time this year and the, the, the family was very excited when I contacted them and and when we yeah when I because they are obviously they don't with with 50,000 bottles that you don't do much export at all so they were very excited yeah. to see the wines traveling to Canada so um, yeah I hope you give them a chance and, and try out something new if you're interested in a vino nomine di Montepulciano they also have Thank a reserva you. right <laughs> They also have a Reserva and uh, 2012, so um, we're going quite some time back. Um, the law requirement is, says three years of aging, but they do more actually than that. And the vinification is again classic, so obviously hand harvested uh, late September, early October, and then classic fermentation process for about 20 to 25 days. And again, we have here um, the aging in Slavonian oaks, oak casks. And um, Definitely, obviously, also given the vintage, this is a, a, a much more mature um, Vino Nobile, and it's uh, it's you definitely get more of the kind of more developed aromas in this wine, right? And uh, also, as as Jane also describes, kind of the meaty aromas, the undergrowth. That's definitely kind of more going towards a, a more mature Vino Nobile, right? Because we're also talking about the vintage that is um, 2012, right? So. Yeah, Fangiosa. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a small family-owned estate. And um, yeah, next wine, uh, next estate is the Giulia de' Medici. And um, they have, they're offering two wines in this case. And um, again, here we have a, a cooperative. So Giulia de' Medici is also a cooperative from the Canti Classico area. It was founded in 1965 and they now work on 350 hectares of land. And um, it's a very, um, yeah, it's an estate, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, there are a lot of cooperatives in Italy are, are really kind of, every, in, in, in every region you find a lot of, or several cooperatives, but not always you find the ones that, you know, are able really to deliver a very high quality and we're very excited with the two cooperatives that we have selected because those are really top-notch examples of high-end cooperatives that really really focus on um, on quality wines and it's very often also on sustainably winemaking and um, Julia de Medici yes so we have the Rosso IGT and again, we have in this case about 80% Sangiovese and then a little bit of Merlot and Canaiolo. And, and the other one, the Chianti Classico DOCG is completely uh, Sangiovese only. And it um, ages for about 12 months in Slovenian oak casks. And now we're moving on to Exactly. The last two wines um, are wines and perhaps, Michael, you want to describe just the process of where they can purchase them because I see those are web only. So maybe you might briefly want to touch on that. I, I would. Thank you. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do uh, when Greg and I came on board in last February was to expand the availability of, of number of, of wines to the membership. But we also didn't want to spend more money on printing our catalog as well. So we've combined both the best of both worlds where we've got these web exclusive wines where you when you go to the website and you look we we have created something called an overlay as well so you'll be able to search on these wines if you wanted to search on web exclusive it'll show up for you in the in the uh, list on the web only we've also made mention of them in the catalog if you see it from a particular producer it'll say you'll see more of their wines online so go to here 
and we've we've got those listed. So, so those web exclusives are specifically to to show you some new wines and uh, to to just give you a, a better range of wines available. So thanks thanks for letting me say something about that, Carolina. Uh, you can okay. go ahead on the, these last two. Yes, exactly. So those last two, as, as Michael said, are the, the web only wines and both of them, both of those estates are completely new to, uh, to Pimian. And both of them have one thing in common. Both of them are family owned estates, small ones and independent uh, estates. So the first one, the number 2249, the Talosa Rosso di Montepulciano. So again, we're in the Montepulciano area. Um, um, Italosa is a is a estate that is a fairly young estate. It was only founded in 70, 1972, actually by an enter, by a Roman entrepreneur, so a, a businessman from Rome who decided to invest in uh, in in the Montepulciano area because he fell in love with the land and he purchased was able to purchase some beautiful um, uh, vineyards in the really in the heart of the Montepulciano area. And it's a fairly small estate, so they work on 33 hectares of land. And it's beautiful if you ever want to visit them because they have um, their historic cellar that is right below, underneath the basically the main piazza in uh, in Montepulciano. So it's right between the, in the heart of the city center of that small town, that is where they have a, a part of their, of their historic cellar. And, um, so a uh, small estate again, and they produce about 100,000 bottles a year. What Jane has selected from them is the Rosso di Montepulciano. And Rosso di Montepulciano, so again, this is a, um, a fresh, easy drinking red wine. We have in this case 85% Sangiovese and then Merlot and Canaiolo. And um, it's a wine that I wouldn't really age. It's really that they're also it, it, that that's a wine that's made to be drunk young, really, and it's a wine that you can pair beautifully with lots of different things. Again, we're we're focusing more on the primary aromas in this case, and it's um it's uh, matured mainly on in, in stainless steel to preserve those beautiful delicate aromas of um, the Sangiovese that, that from the Montepulciano area. And the last wine is a wine that I was a big, I am still a big fan of. Um, it's Poggio Grande. And Poggio Grande, again, new, completely new to Opimian. And it's, again, a very small winery and um, a very small winery, only founded in 1999 by, by Luca Zampredri, who now runs this winery together with his, his daughter. So the two are Giulietta. So the two of them run the winery and um, he started in, in 1999 as he wanted to kind of, they were, prior to that, they were only farming the vineyards and, and selling grapes to cooperatives or to other wineries. And they also have forest and, and, and olive trees. He wanted to change his life and started vinifying. So he only started in 1999 with his own uh, vinification process. And then he was joined by his daughter, Giulietta, who now takes care of also of the, the, the management and kind of the, the selling part of, of the wines. And um, they only work on six hectares of land. So again, we're talking about a very, very small winery and the, I don't think they do any sort of export. Really, they, I was talking to them earlier this year uh, where, where they were obviously complaining a lot by, you know, by, by selling mainly through cellar doors or through their tasting room, obviously now with COVID and with all the tourists uh, that are not coming, obviously they lost a lot, a big portion of, 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 um, of their distribution channels. And hence, um, it is a difficult year for them for sure. Um, so, they, yeah, they don't do any sort of exporting. So that's um, that's a great opportunity for you if, if you want to taste this, again, a very small winery. And they're in uh, Val d'Orcia area. So um, this is kind of a more of a little bit of a warmer area within the region. And um, they do, it's all um, organic farming. And um, I love their labels. I don't know if you've seen, do you see the labels also on that? Cause they have, she has some, and that, that's definitely Julieta. Like she has some very useful and creative ideas. So the labels are all different. If you ever go on their website, you'll see. But um, this one is, is really beautifully, and I thought elegantly made. It's a hundred percent Giangiovese, right? A little bit richer in style, right? And um, she does it, the vinification is first in stainless steel. 
and then um and it's it's as, because it is all organic it's um indigenous yeast strains that we have here right so it's not inoculated it's completely organic and indigenous uh, yeast that she uses and then it's it's it matured for about 30 months in in large french oak vats and this is a wine that you can definitely age uh, for several years. It's 2016, the, the current vintage, uh, which has been a fantastic vintage for the area for sure. And um, yeah, give it a try. It's a, it's really, it's a tiny, tiny estate that um, you probably <laughs> never really see around. And, uh, but I was very happy when I, when I met actually Julieta and she was very excited. And um, so, yeah, hopefully you 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 give them a chance and start trying the Pojogan, the uh, the wine that Jane uh, selected because I thought it was a gorgeous wine. That's great, and and uh, if you don't mind going back to two two four three Il Vetro Rosso di Montecchino, which you have to say much better than I do. Yeah, Il Vetro. <laughs> yes, and and il so vetro. Paul had asked us to go back to that one. It was skipped over a bit, and. And would you, is it a Rosso instead of a Brunello because it's from a, a larger area or? Yeah, if it's a, hang on, which wine are you talking about? So 2243, Il Vetro Rosso. Uh, sorry, that was, I, I skipped that one, I think. Yeah, Rosso di Montepulciano. Yeah. Exactly. So this is a, a, a larger appellation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. exactly. So, so when you compare those two, with the, if you compare that to the Brunello. Yeah, so the, also completely different wines because you have the Brunello, which is obviously DOCG, it's the highest denomination. It's wines that are being aged for, for like vinified in oak, uh, aged and a completely different vinification process. And those are wines that you really want to age also once you buy the wines. Whereas the Rosso di Montalcino is a wine made to be drunk young. I agree, it's the same variety for, for the most part. Right. Uh, but, but it's very it's different. I mean, that's very the joy different. of wine, right? That's, yes, that's, and that's yeah. the beauty. So this is a wine that you want to drink every day, you know, you don't, don't be scared to kind of pair it with, with all sorts of food because it, 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 it will match, it will pair. And um, it's, um, yeah, in this case, it's 12 months Slovenian oak, but it's, it's kind of more light, fresh, vibrant red wine that you find here. The Brunello is a whole different thing. That's right. a very serious, complex wine that, you know, you, you don't just open without thinking about it. It's, it, right. it's kind of more of a, uh, yeah. And celebrating celebrating something <laughs> that's for right. sure <laughs> that's, that's right. every day you can still celebrate every day but it's still a right. celebration of a sort isn't it that's great. <laughs> well that's that's marvelous i'm not seeing any other questions i did want to uh to thank you for sussing out these smaller uh vineyards which we could never do that's that's um, for avenue and yourself and and your family thank you very much it's you're such an important partner to us and and it sounds like i'm ending but i'm not because i I also uh, just wanted to talk to you about the, when we met in New York a couple of years ago, yeah. I talked about doing a tour for Opimians that are going to be, it's going to focus on uh, female winemakers and yeah. you, you and your family absolutely fit the bill there. So when, when things <laughs> well, open come, up. Well, come, come, come. Yes, and when, I bring when, you to those vineyards that you see in the background. <laughs> that's, and, and I think we'll have no trouble filling up that tour as soon as we right. know it's going to be safe. We will uh, uh, I know. start offering it. Well, hopefully, hopefully soon. You're yeah. more than welcome to come because it's it's we're up in Alto Adige, so way up north and it's a gorgeous area to to visit and something different to to Tuscany for sure both are yeah, absolutely beautiful. and and there's a bit of German spoken too so I'll feel right at home for sure so, for sure yes, <laughs> that's right and so so um I'm not seeing any other questions and I do believe Carolina is going to leave us now I hope you don't mind my saying that you've got a new baby to look after yes so exactly. I have a, a six week old baby so yes I better run now <laughs> oh that's marvelous thank you for taking the time and that was great to, thank to you, work God. through that and uh Stay tuned, everybody. We're going to go over to uh, Nicolo right now. So thank you, Carolina. Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you, Michael. Ciao. Bye-bye. So Nicolo, there he is from Altadana. I always just say that one, not, not your other name, because uh, it's totally unpronounceable to we non-Italians. Uh, <laughs> so I'll leave that one up to you. But over to you, sir. Thank you very much. So. Opinion friends, welcome to our cellar and to our stage. Uh, before to start to introduce you to our production, let me thank personally all of you to be here today and uh, to share with us your passion, beautiful passion about wine that is bringing today so many people 
connect each other all over the world. It's a really beautiful thing, and I'm happy to be part of that. I'm uh, Nicolo Chiocioli Altadonna, and I'm the second generation of technologies of my family. I'm also Oh, somehow you've gotten uh, muted. I don't know why, but uh, can you unmute yourself? I don't know how that happened. Look, there, unmuted. now, yeah, you're back. On, better? You're, you're back in business. Great. Oh, sorry. I don't know how that it happened because I'm far from my computer. <laughs> but magic uh, of technology. I have a feeling we've got a gremlin in the system. <laughs> <laughs> so right I, I don't know where I left you, but uh, let me restart. I am... Um, Nicolò Chiozzoli Altadonna. I am the second generation of technologists of my family and I also the wine production manager of uh, this estate. And uh, being a second generation of technologists, uh, I was graduated in the same kind of university of my father. Specifically, it was uh, right the same. Uh, it's the University of Florence of Agronomical Science. And my degree was in uh, analogical and viticultural science. I got graduated in uh, 2009. And just after uh, my graduation, we started to produce uh, wine with uh, my brother and his brother. Probably part of you already met the last time we, we do this uh, beautiful um, sharing, uh, uh, speaking about our distillery. And um, yes, so the first vintage, uh, it was uh, 2010. And uh, we started to produce wine in Chianti Classico area, more specifically in, uh, in the area of uh, Gaiola and Chianti. Our vineyards uh, are growing in a uh, terrific soil. Uh, it's a medium texture of clay, uh, very, very rich. And the two typical stone of this uh, area of Tuscany, it's uh, Galestro and Alberete, that they are basically uh, marstone and clay stone and, and limestone. And with an altitude range, then it's go from 300 up to 500 meters of about sea level. And um, another really important characteristic of our vineyards is that uh, they are all totally surrounded um, from uh, uh, natural deep woods. It's a private natural reserve that um, um, really make a natural barrier between us and the rest of the world. And also, uh, it's bringing itself uh, with all, all its uh, uh, amazing biodiversity uh, of life. Uh, it's also bringing a, a stock, a reserve of uh, water and humidity, and also help us to um, a little bit um, um, refresh and um, melting the, the super warm uh, uh, vintage that we are getting more and more in the last years. Uh, coming from this uh, unique piece of land uh, that we are totally managed by hand, we are producing two different lines of wine. They are both uh, um, a dedication of uh, our parents, Stefano Chioccioli and uh, Anna Altadonna. Uh, because of that, we will have the Altadonna line and the Chioccioli line. How we obtain this uh, two different collection of wine uh, uh, coming from the same piece of land? The answer is uh, quite easy. It's uh, respecting as first the natural potential of ripeness of our grape. From the first vintage ever when we started to produce wine from this beautiful piece of land, we understood that because the territory itself, because the altitude, because the soil, because the microclimate where we was working with, uh, naturally, our grape, uh, our vines, uh, was bringing grape with a different, different poten potential. Uh, speaking about ripeness, if we will be on the top part of the vines uh, or in the little lower side of the of the vineyards. So, starting from um, putting attention on these uh, little but really really important details, we decide to have uh, a, an harvest that there wasn't doing a was indeed in just one time but uh, it was a parcel harvest so parcel means that dividing the harvest time uh, following the natural ripeness of our grape following uh, the the vineyard itself uh, the vehicle itself uh, also the altitude inside the vineyard uh, we 
was uh, uh, reaching it for each single uh, uh, part the uh, best ripeness that we could get naturally uh, with our vines. So every single uh, area is harvested with its own time. How we can understand that is uh, the, this parcel is ready to be harvested? So with the things we do, of course, chemical analysis, but the most important thing is uh, the the, the, our control, our taste control. So we step all over the vines and we pick a grape once in a while. We taste the, the grape, we, we taste the pulp and we taste the juice. And we understand also which uh, um, ratio is between acidity and sugar component. But the most important also, we take the skin of the grape, we skew it on our finger and we see how much color the skin is going to left on our finger. And so we understand also the what is the, the in, in which moment of the maturation of the skin of the berry is it, and uh, how much the skin is ready to left uh, the color that it is bringing. Uh, another important time is when uh, during this tasting we taste the seeds of the grape because uh, let us understand the the which period we are about uh, uh, ripeness of tannin. It's a really important thing, especially if we are working with Sangiovese. So um, through, uh, thanks to this uh, attention and in the little details about the ripeness, and also thanks that all the uh, vineyard management is made by hand, we, um, we arrive uh, at the end of uh, the summer season when it's time uh, to, to pick in the grape and uh, we, uh, harvest all our uh, land by hand. It's a meticulous harvest um, where we collect the, the bunch harvest in the small boxes. Every single box uh, never reach uh, more than eight to 10 kilos uh, of uh, bunch. And uh, all those bo uh, boxes after the harvest are usually put in, uh, in a fridge container for one night where we let the, the, all the bunch rest itself and we drop down the temperature of the, all the berry around eight Celsius degree. The day after we, we harvest, we gently take off uh, this uh, box full of uh, bunch and we empty this box extremely gently uh, on the first uh, table of, uh, of checking that we have. It's a, it's a running table where we have a, a few guys that are taking care again or every single bunch of was harvest, harvest the day before. This is an important moment because um, um, even if we are harvest by hand, we, do not, we can't forget that we are totally surrounded by a natural private reserve. That means that um, the night before the harvest, uh, we could have uh, some uh, friends, uh, some uh, uh, deer or some uh, fox or some uh, wild pork that uh, like to enjoy our grape and to come to bite uh, our berries before to be harvested. So in that, uh, on the first uh, table of selection, we are checking again the berry. And if there is some uh, part that was damaged, we by some animals. With the little scissor, we take off this part and we let the rest of uh, the bunch reaching the destemi machine. So after the destemi machine, all the little berry are uh, following on uh, a second table of selection. It's a shaking table where we have uh, eight, eight guys that are manually taking care of every single berry. What we are doing at this time of the selection, we are taking out from the table all the little pieces of stem that we are still reaching from the stem machine. And we are also taking uh, off the table all the little birds that they are not unperfect, right? Uh, they are not uh, perfect healthy and they are probably already crashed because of the machine. So in the end, what we are going to have inside um, the, the cellar and uh, what we are going to work inside the cellar are only perfect, right? perfect, healthy, and uh, uh, berry. So we work only with the uh, noble stunning. And so this is um, make us able to uh, have a little bit longer maturation without uh, never have uh, too much extraction. And 
this is a, a, a it's a process that is uh, common for all our wines. And uh, what is uh, make the difference? Uh, it's what happens inside the cellar. So changing the wine, change the technique of uh, fermentation, the the time of uh, of uh, maturation on the skin, and also the time uh, of uh, aging in barrels. Uh, you can see behind me some of our barrels, and uh, we will go through uh, some explanation uh, also about the fermentation in barrica in the next few steps. So the, mostly we are used to ferment our grape in a, in a small steel tank, a traditional steel tank, where the only uh, technology we have is the temperature control. So all the ferment fermentation cap, it's uh, um, managed by hand. And uh, again, we like to uh, do personally all of these uh, things because we believe, we strongly believe in details and without just let the pump or make it pumping over, we would like to uh, take care and see how is going the, the uh, fermentation cap. It's a really important moment of the life of the wine. Uh, we are also used to ferment uh, in barrique for some of uh, our wines, especially for the culture line. And uh, when we ferment in barrique, we are uh, introduced a few years ago uh, at a new technology. Uh, it's coming from French. It's called Integral Vinification System. Behind me over here, you can see some barrique that uh, probably, if you put attention, they have a specific unique uh, door here on the side. And uh, this is our barrique that are used for ferment with the Integral Vinification System. What, uh, what is the main difference this technique uh, give uh, um, to us? Is the thing that there is nothing that is going to work uh, between uh, the, the juice uh, of, the, of the wine and his uh, skin. Because um, if you see the barrique, thanks to this door, we can pull the barrique straight with grapes in this door. Then we close the door, every single barrique uh, rest on a specific support as you can see that allow me to move and turn around both the side 360 uh, the skin with his own juice so doing that we don't need a pump uh, to make a pumping over and we also don't need a stick to make the manual judge so it will have a gently extraction a gently maturation on the skin allowed us to take the wine on the skin for a little bit longer period. And uh, what in the end we will have, we have a more extraction of fruitiness, more extraction of vital for sure, and uh, also more uh, uh, touch of territory expression. And of course, since it's a, a technique that allows you to extract more, you really need to have a perfect ripeness of your grape before to use it. Uh, keep speaking about barrique. We are uh, aged our wine in um, fine grain uh, French whole barrique. It's uh, the best selection we can find in the market about barrique for our point of view because uh, they are all uh, uh, extremely gently toasted. They are not toasted on a straight um, um, chop fire, but they are uh, toasted with a low temperature for a long period. So even if the wine is big, you will never get the, the too much uh, sensation of wood, the hint of uh, barrel aging. The, the barriques are just something that helps us uh, to let the wine grow and uh, make this uh, natural elevation. Speaking about the, um, if there is any question, please feel free. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, like to add also. I'm, I'm watching it and there's some specific questions to wines when you get to that point, but I, I can say I've never seen the system that you have behind you there. It's quite remarkable that uh, yeah. that you can turn each barrel, each barrique individually. It's, uh, that's really something. Is that, that is fairly unique, I would suggest, yes? Is it, is it a new technique? It's yeah, it's a new technology. Uh, probably it is 10 years old, uh, no more. It's coming from uh, La Baron. Uh, it's a barrel producer, amazing barrel producer from France. And um, yes, the barrique has this, this design with its own door, but also the system 
where you can uh, rest and stop the, bar the barrels, but also you can work during the fermentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's really helpful, uh, especially to be able to use these technologies. Right, and, and as we move into your just mentioning each of these wines individually, um, someone has asked how rare it is to use a Sangiovese for, for a sparkling, which I think it is fairly, isn't it? That, that's unique. <laughs> yes, yes. yes, it's quite unique. Um, we really like to use Sangiovese also for sparkling wine because uh, I, I, we like, we love this part of Sangiovese. His flexibility can be a really full of body, powerful, elegant, uh, uh, red wine for aging, but can also can bring all this acidity and freshness in the second re-fermentation for making uh, sparkling wine. As the heads of family, we are probably, uh, my father was probably the, the first uh, winemaker that introduced uh, this, uh, this sparkling wine from Sanchovese with a producer from here, from Chianti Classico. And it was uh, almost uh, 20 years uh, ago. So even if we are quite young as producer, we have a long experience also doing that. And our uh, Sangiovese uh, Spumante is uh, a long sharp method. method. It's 100% Sangiovese. And when I mean long sharp method, method means that after the refermentation, we'll let the wine uh, rest and enjoy his own uh, uh, eat for three months before to be bottled. It mm -hmm. has a, is specific uh, elegance in Perlage, but uh, bring inside itself all the minerality of our soil and uh, the beautiful acidity of the anticipate harvest of Sangiovese. It is a beautiful sweetness in the end um, that clean up your mouth and uh, make you uh, looking for the second glass, for sure. It's a perfect for uh, as a start of your evening, or if you like to enjoy with all the uh, seafood dishes that you prefer, but we saw last time uh, probably they can also be being uh, used uh, well uh, in a well made in, in cocktails. So <laughs> right, yes, you can also play cool. with that. <laughs> yeah. Super. And uh, do you want to run through starting with the Altadana? I'm actually, I'm that's the one I'm drinking. It's in my glass right now. So great. So Altadona yes. Chianti Classico. Cheers. I cannot drink because then after that I have to drive and it's. Uh, quite a late in the okay, evening, so. Right. <laughs> but you've had this one before, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, sometimes, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so, Altadonna Chianti Classico, it's a 90% Sangiovese, 10% Merlot. It's a typical traditional Chianti Classico with a beautiful expression of Sangiovese. It's a fermented in a steel tank, uh, around 25 days uh, of maturation on the skin. And then he's uh, having his own uh, body fermentation in a French barrel, where he... Oh, uh, we... For, uh, one year. We are not uh, using new barrel. You, you, had, uh, you okay? had gone out there. Keep going. It's your back. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, great. I'm back. Good to know. So, yes, it's, uh, it's in the... Uh, it's elevated in a French barrel for one year, not new barrels, so second to third years old barrel. So help us to have a little bit of spiciness, but uh, just to let the wine uh, increase its uh, own expression inside its own elevation. It's uh, really, really good with uh, a lot of um, uh, first dishes, if uh, we think about uh, uh, what we should eat during drinking this wine. Uh, a lot of pasta, di pasta dishes, but because uh, uh, the tanning are uh, so uh, gentle and they be because the beautiful um, uh, fruitiness of the Sangiovese can be also easily drink by itself. And um, it's, a, it's a kind of uh, Chianti Classico that can go, uh, it can be appreciated, uh, appreciated uh, easily from uh, expert palate, also for a, a young drinker. Uh, is not too much aggressive, so can also um, make a good match with uh, some uh, female palate too. Really good daily Chianti Classico. It's uh, keep going. Um, oui. Yes. Si. Yes, great. <laughs> with uh, Chianti Classico, it's 
uh, the reserve of the, the wine I just spoke before. Uh, same uh, uh, similar blend, we increase the size of Sanchovese. It's a 95% Sanchovese, 5% Merlot. Also, the reserve of Chianti Classic Quattadona is fermented in a steel tank. The, the medium average of uh, uh, maturation time on the skin is uh, around 28 up to three days uh, uh, of maturation. And it, it has its fermentation of Marathi fermentation uh, in barrels. And then uh, it also has its own elevage in uh, French barrique. Almost the same kind of barrique we are using with the Chianti Classico, uh, but for a longer period, uh, up to 14 to 16, it depends on the vintage, but around 14, 16 months. And here, what we have, we increase uh, uh, the ripeness of, uh, of the grape uh, starting from, uh, starting from the, the vineyard. So we have a little bit more uh, powerful uh, in the expression of Sanchovese. We increase uh, the size of spiciness and uh, um, and the complexity. Uh, I suggest you to open up a little bit before to drink and uh, can go easily with uh, some good cheese or also some uh, cold cuts has also meat in general, barbecue as you prefer. You can also have a, a stew with meat too without no problem. Also has all the yeah, wines from Atadonna uh, once you would drink, you would see how uh, it's um, uh, easy to be drinking. Because uh, again, it's a traditional Chianti Classico Riserva, but uh, with the traditional acidity and uh, characters uh, of uh, San Giovanni, but without anything that is too aggressive. So this balance, uh, typical of the, the Alta Donna line, uh, helps the, 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 consumer, the customers to, to drink and enjoy it easily without uh, thinking too much about what they are drinking, but for sure enjoying what they're drinking. So after the, the Chianti Classico Riserva, we, we leave uh, the DOCG area and we step in the IGT. Our Assalto, it's uh, our super task from uh, the Atalanta line is an IGT, still strongly based on Sangiovese. Uh, we have a 70% Sangiovese, 15% Merlot, 15% Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, as we are doing with all our grapes, every single vital of grapes are totally fermented on its own and also has its own uh, elevage. We make the final blend only in the end before to, to go to bottle the wine. A beautiful, uh, powerful, uh, with a big shoulder, but really uh, smooth uh, and uh, soft tanning, beautiful fruitiness. We have all the berry that we are looking for in this kind of wine. So from the red berry, the blueberry, uh, a touch of also a little bit touch of uh, spiciness and, um, and a little bit touch of tobaccos too. It goes really well with the aged uh, cheese and um, uh, meat that is, uh, can be used. So the, the game meat go really, really well. And uh, I suggest also with this wine to open up a little bit the, uh, the wine. A couple of hours will be enough. Uh, We're starting to have some real problems with your, uh, with your connection here. So, um, so I will have you skip over to connection. Uh, yeah, it, sorry, it's sorry, difficult. Yeah. Uh, we've we've been losing see. you quite a bit. Um, I'm so no sorry. problem. Uh, but maybe if we just yeah, have you, you know, if we have you go to uh, to one of the three um, of uh, of the, uh, the 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 other line, and uh, yes, then we'll we'll finish off. Yes. Okay. Sounds yeah. great. Uh, you you could pick what you prefer better and um, yeah um, which one did we prepare you for I can't remember although you know all three very well don't you so uh, 22 28 yeah I would love to hear about 22 28 <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm getting it now Kicciolo. Eh? how's Chiocioli. that Chiocioli. 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 Oh, I wasn't even close close, close. <laughs> no. uh, what is the 20 22 yes yeah, so so it's the actually... catalog of ever Carismante. Carismante. Here we are. Yes. Good choice. 
it's yeah. our grand selection. It's uh, uh, the top wine we can produce from uh, the Chianti Classico region is 100% Sangiovese. Um, it's totally fermented in uh, integral vinification barrels. Here we are, the, the ones we spoke before. Mm -hmm. And then it has its own uh, aging for 24 months uh, in uh, barrels. After this uh, aging in, uh, in barrels, uh, we bottled and we wait uh, around a couple of years before to release uh, this wine in the market. It has uh, all the other wine from the Chioccio line. It's a super limited production that is not produced every year. Only when we can naturally reach the perfect uh, ripeness of our grape. So when the vintage allowed us to reach this kind of quality, so at that point we are starting to produce this wine. Uh, there is no compromise about all the Chiotri line uh, regarding this topic. It's a, this, it's a poor expression of Sanchovese with all these uh, powerful and elegant and it, it bring inside this bottle all the notes that make uh, Sanchovese famous uh, through the palace of the drinker through the last uh, years and years. As um, powerful but elegant, uh, a, a lot of uh, finesse in the smell, especially with a beautiful touch of balsamic uh, in the end of the after tasting. It's a really long line. Uh, it can be the best uh, match if I can, as a, um, a guy from uh, Florence, if I want to match it, it's a Fiorentina state for sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> But again, I can't wait to travel again because it'll be wonderful to come for a real one <laughs> in Florence and and uh, looking forward to have all of you here and share a bottle of that with you. Well, that that's marvelous. Thank you, Nicolo. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead now. Um, and we're we're just after three o'clock now, so thank you for taking the time to talk to us and show us Pleasure. that the, your wines, of course, but that unique system behind you is quite remarkable. It's always fun to see new new uh, things. And I will remind people that you did make us some cocktails on a previous call and we uh, recorded that. So that's available on YouTube if people want to see the uh, the wonderful spirits that are made by your family. That's great. And, and uh, oh, and we've gotten a question uh, for someone would like you to talk about 2226, which is the um, Chianti Classico DOCG Alta Donna family estate. 2226. Here we are. No, no, the family. No, 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 it's the it's in the other line. The the first one, yeah, that guy. The Chiocho, the Chiati Classico. Yes. Yeah, I keep yes. trying to avoid saying Chiocho. <laughs> Chiocho. Think about Chianti. Chianti. Same start. Chio. Yes, so that's right. Chianti Classico is um, it's a blend of eighty five percent Sangiovese. 5% Merlot, 5% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5% Cigar. It's a kind of... Oh. ...that is a straight coming from our vineyard. We decide to keep the natural expression of this part of it. It's fermented in the tank, has the same kind of uh, um, maturation time of the other Chianti Classico. It's uh, around 25 days on its own skin. And then he's doing malactic fermentation in barrels and age months in a uh, French oak barrick and uh, we have uh, uh, it's a wine that can be drink easily with uh, all the meat you want it and all the cold cuts you you like to enjoy with but uh, it uh, has this beautiful uh, hint of San that uh, draw all your uh, dry all uh, your tasting uh, it's also can it can be edible uh, drink by itself too that's great. Well, thank you. Thank you again. And as I was saying, then, then um, uh, make sure you see uh, Nicolo making his cocktails with his spirits as well. I've ordered one of each of the spirits, so I'll be making cocktails here at the house when they arrive. And thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm just seeing, um, oh, unfortunately, there's another one for Carolina. I'll try and answer that independently. And I did want to tell people that the, um, the Il Vetro, um, is down to the, that vertical case is down to 42 cases available. There's been, it's gone down six since we started at two o'clock. So you better get at that one. We've got another week and we often do about 50% of our sales uh, during this path, this final week. So it's important to get your orders in. So 
So thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Nicolo, for this, and thank you in absence. Thank you very uh, much, Carolina. for the beautiful opportunity. Yes, and Anais, thank you for, for arranging this. And we'd be curious to know if anybody still had trouble with their iPads. Uh, I think this worked better for everybody. So, um, so please let us know if it didn't, because uh, we need to know that sort of thing. So, so good afternoon, good evening, and uh, I don't think any good mornings at this point. So thank you all again. Have a happy Sunday and uh, enjoy week five. Oh, I should say that 281 closes on January 18th, so don't be late. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.